Hi everyone, uh, welcome again to uh, another edition of Next Picks here on Phoenix TV. Joined again uh, with Coach Bill as we uh, take a quick look back on how we did last weekend for the Divisional Championship Games uh, and then we'll, we'll look ahead to the upcoming Championship Games this weekend and see uh, see if we can uh, get some more winners. Um, when I say we get some more winners, how are you doing Coach? A good week for you then. Uh, you nailed it, I mean... Man, you were on the bottom. Uh, I think I got lucky with a few. With, well, no, actually, no, you're right. You're absolutely right. Um, you know, I let, I let my heart hurt me in one game. Um, and that, that, that made the, that was the only, yeah, that was great. You know, I mean, um, thanks. I, I think, I think both of us, it was nice the way that we, you know, we, we had a little bit of a mix, uh, but yeah, I'm three and one i'll take that um yeah, and uh see how that goes and in um, fairness you, yeah you, the, the heart wasn't too far away i mean you know we'll, we'll get there but you know you three and one you know three one we'll see how we go this week and, and where we where we, where we go with our picks a little bit more difficult when you've only got a couple of games to talk about but but who knows where we'll go so if we if we start again we will do a very quick recap of, of how we got on last week then we'll start with the the first game the LA Rams um, playing the Green Bay Packers you went for the Packers I went for the Rams you you called it Aaron Donald just didn't play enough for me um, and and not only Donald uh, there are a number of other uh, defensive players that, that didn't get enough snaps uh, and the Rams just didn't get going in, in on the defense and and that that hurt them uh, you, you can't give the pack the numbers that they gave them um, and and Rogers looked in absolute control which which you called yeah uh, no I mean you know I, I'm, I've got a lot of respect for that Rams uh, they've they've put up some good numbers this year. Sacks, they just looked good, but boy, they could not contain. They just couldn't contain Rodgers. I mean, um, you know, the guys the guys a lock. We already know that he's he's definitely Hall of Fame. But man, just the way he put it and that run, that you know, old wheels, but he you know, nice little pump fake. They bought it and then just walked it in. Um, but there are some things that you need to take away from that game, which will affect what's going to happen later this for the next two the next games oh um, yeah 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 you know so uh what was it green bay four sacks on golf yeah um oh you know, and and what Zedarius smith got you know got into that action <laughs> which is great um yeah so i think you know that's going to be one but I, I i was i'll tell you the one thing i was still impressed with and again this affects a little bit later cam Akers ran that ball you know Boy. he's still yeah. you know and that and that rush that, that rushing defense for, for Green Bay seemed to have been a little bit leaky. But, um, you know, I think the Rams have got a lot to be happy about going into next season. They had a, they had a weird season this year. I think, you know, they, we expected them to just go all guns blazing, but then they had that backfield where you didn't know who was going to play one week to the next. Um, and I think golf, you know, you mentioned it last week. There was a period of time where it looked like he kind of fell out of love with the game or something. There's just something happened. Um, and he seemed to have got his spark back. You know, maybe maybe going ahead and benching him might have had something that maybe Sean McVay, McVay had a, a discussion with him. But, uh, yeah, yeah. That, that was – I was happy with that game. I mean, and, yeah, you know, some of those things that we looked at, Devontae Adams had a, a game again. Um, Valdi uh, Scouting, I think, had something like four or five catches, but they were all for, you know, Big yards. 20 plus yards. Yeah, big the guy, yards. You know, yeah. Yeah, and Tanyan. I think and what um, about old Tanyan again? Tanyan, the tight end, still putting up 11 touchdowns. We, uh, Why in the world did I not pick him up? We saw, a lot, we saw a lot from the Rams in that game. Uh, the, the, for me, the Packers never looked out of control of it. Uh, but the Rams kept, kept it interesting a lot longer than perhaps mm. they may have done. But, you know, the the the... the the venerable Rogers, he just keeps on rolling on this season. No, you know he's now in the championship game, and it will be interesting. And we'll get there, and we'll see. You know what's going to happen in that game. But you know, I've always been brought up on the old saying: defenses win championships. And this weekend, we've seen three of the top five defenses eliminated. 
And okay. you just have to wonder, is there, is there a shift or is it just that this has just been one of those seasons where things are happening and nobody can quite explain them? Well, you know, um, I think that this is a bigger discussion that you need to have. They are making it so – they're making it, one, safe. Quarterbacks are getting a, have a lot more safety put around them. And it is hard. It's, I mean, it's making it difficult on defenses. But, you know, defensive pass interference, you sneeze on a guy and it's probably going to get called. Oh, should not be saying anything about sneezing or anything COVID related. So <laughs> hold off on that. But um, it, then it's making it difficult, you know, and, and I'm not one of those players um, that always was trying to figure out, okay, how do I use the rules in my benefit? But it's becoming very, very difficult. As a, as a defensive end right now to, to really be able to go ahead and provide proper coverage. No, you know, you're, and you're even when right. you do the right things, little things kind of come in and bite you. And, and I think that's part of the reason why defenses are struggling. I think there's also been a lot of this year within especially some of the stronger defenses. Donald, you know, nothing stops that guy except for COVID. Mm. You know, took him, out, took him out for a lot longer than most people. Uh, you look at uh, Shaq Barrett, same situation. You know, athletes um, athletes are, are not fragile. They're very much, they're, you know, they're very resilient. I think resilience is a good word for it. But when something kind of um, affects you, uh, like what happened with these, these particular two players that I've mentioned, there's a lot of other ones in there. It's hard. Um, yeah, I, and you know, and, and, right. the NFL know. have to uh, have to take the off season and, and maybe look at some of these some of these issues that, that we're going to touch on. And, and there are a number of talking points that come out of last weekend, and, and two big ones which we'll we'll look at in, in a little bit more depth with with the time that we've got. And and again, it'll be interesting as we move into the off season because there does seem to be a little bit of a, a shift in balance. Um, whether it's for entertainment purposes, whether it's for safety purposes, however they're addressing it, it's going to be interesting to see how some of the issues, as, as we say, we're going to touch on them, um, will raise themselves. Uh, moving into um, the QB discussion, and again, Rogers securing a, another championship appearance, um, arguably, you know, the comeback player, as many people have said, I don't know how you call Rogers a comeback player this year, but that, that seems to be the, the, the big, Thing for him. We move then on to the, the Ravens uh, and the Bills. This was a game you, you again went for the Bills. I went for the Ravens on the back of, of Lamar. Um, but boy, wow. You, you Again, you, you nailed this one. You, you were on this. this. This game did not go how I expected it to go. In, you know, the thing was, is that you look at, in, in theory, most people this was going to end up being a, it, you know, Lamar was going to put on a show. Uh, and on paper, it did look like that that was going to be the case because if you look at that um, Bills defense, very quiet defense. It's not some. It, there's no standouts. I mean, there are anybody who plays in the NFL is a standout. You know, it takes a lot of effort, a lot of commitment, and a lot of talent and, and luck. But um, in that in that Bills defense, they were able to get patient and stop the run, but more importantly, stop Lamar. You know, Lamar. He was always hurried. And when he even, you never, you never, before any other game you'd watch, you'd always expect if Lamar was kind of out of the pocket, it's like, here he goes. He's going to just go. He's going to run off and he's probably going to go ahead and up a first down at least. But they waited and they, they allowed him a little bit of movement, but not much. And then yeah. they took him down. And yeah. I think the frustration was there. And obviously, you know, as an O line person, you know yourself the worst thing that can happen is you start seeing your quarterback get a little bit edgy because yeah. you don't know what that guy's going to do. And I think that that defense, because of what was all that pressure that was being put on one to worry about run, but two, where's Lamar going to go? Cause he's just going to make it up. Yeah. I think that's where part of the problem was. I think that the, the, the defense for the, you know, well, the Ravens have got a deep, a really strong offense. I think that offense just wasn't able to handle one, the pressure. And then when they started not, you know, when things weren't moving away, I think it started to get to them. Um, and I, I think, think right. it, it, I think, I think the, the words you used that, that summed it up for me was, was contained. 
you know, you, you contain, I think, I mean, containing Jackson and, and holding Baltimore to three points in the first half, um, you know, as you say, you know, improvising plays is, is all well and good when things are going your way. But the moment you expect your quarterback to go to your right hand side and suddenly he's, he's way off over on the left hand side of the field as a lineman, yeah. the line just can't, can't do that. And, 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 credit the Bills and you say they got you know big big play for the day Tyrion Johnson 101 yard you know pick six you know when you look at the score a 17 the 17 to 3 game a, a pick six you know that that's huge mm. and, and that's the turning point and uh, you know the Bills fair play they 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 regardless of, of Jackson coming out of the game at the end of the third quarter I think by then they had the game under control yeah, I think so too. And, and you know, the thing is, is that I don't think that the, you know, the Ravens should not feel like this has been a, a bad season. I think that where, where it gets for me is the fact that you've got a Bills team that haven't won in a long time. And you've got a hot, real hot strong quarterback who is, is good. And then, of course, you've got Stefan Diggs, who's, you know, got, I keep saying it, Guy's got a chip on his shoulder. Mm. He's had a chip on his shoulder since day one. You know, he's trying to prove that he is Randy Moss. He's trying to prove that he is up there with the top level. And, you know, he had a, a couple of years where he was really good. Then he got brought down a little bit. Um, I think that this is where Diggs, you know, Diggs shown last week. I think he a little hundred yards. Um, this is going to be where Josh Allen really, really starts looking at him. Yeah, um, he's going to get targeted. You know, I, but I agree, and I think that game uh, it gives us it gives us something to talk about when we when we look forward at, uh, and how that matchup goes. But um, no, so there you are. You're sitting pretty two two and zero oh at the end of uh, at the end of uh, Saturday. We move into Sunday. Sunday, Browns, Chiefs. You called this one with your head, I believe, um, rather than, or was it with the heart? With rather than the heart led the head. Uh, I went for the Browns. I also went for the Browns. And it's been said a lot this week, you know, did the Chiefs win that game or did the Browns beat the Browns? When you, when you look at that game, the Chiefs started off like a steam train, looked like they were going to absolutely dominate it. And the, and the Browns hung in there. And, and, and at some point it looked like that's all they were doing. We get to the end of the first half. The Browns are on a drive. And here we go. Perhaps for me, what could be one of the big talking points um, in the off season, almost a, a bit like the tuck rule um, with, with Brady all those years back. Higgins, three yards from the end zone, reaching out, trying to get the score with the Browns getting the ball back in the, in the second half, which that could have been a big swing, could have been the game changer. Matt, yeah. Huge hustle, great hustle. You can't take the hustle away from the defender to, to make the play. Ball comes loose, fumble out of the end zone, touchback. That's the rule. Nobody's going to argue with the rule. It is what it is. Some people will say he did the right thing reaching for the end zone. Personally, my my my, my things that I was always taught, protect the ball at all times. If you hold the ball, you make go down to two, you've got four chances to get it in. I, I'm not going to criticise Higgins, though, for, for going for it. The play's reviewed, but the review is to see whether or not the ball was fumbled through the end zone. During the course of the review, it's clear that the contact was helmet to helmet. Whether or not the player was turning away, whether or not he was defenceless or, or had protected himself, it was a clear helmet to helmet collision. Now, the rules say helmet to helmet cannot be reviewed. I'm good with that. That's fine. I'm okay with that. That's where the rule stands. However, I think what the NFL have to look at is if during the course of a legitimate review, so the review wasn't called by a coach, it was called by the booth um, for the ball going out the end zone. If during that review you identify a helmet to helmet hit, which is illegal and a flag, that has to be able, the booth or the referee have to be able to say, Yes, the ball went out of the end zone. However, the collision was helmet to helmet. We have to go with the right call on the field. And I think for me, I'm, I don't think that was the killer moment for the Browns. I think we go into the second half of the game. Browns, obviously, we'll, with the Mahomes thing, we'll, we'll get to that um, down the line. We, we won't go to there yet. 
they had the ball with eight minutes left. The momentum was with them. They needed a touchdown. They go three and out. Yeah. And, and that, for me, the Browns, when they needed to step up, when they needed a drive, they didn't execute. And, and it was a great game. Loads of talking points. We, we honestly could probably do a whole half an hour just on that game. I think people would not let us do that and, and switch off. But <laughs> mm. how do you see that? How do you, you know, it, yeah. Yeah, you know the, um, the New Orleans game was probably the one that if you were a, um, if you're new to football, and you should have, that, that most people say you wanted to watch. But as a true passionate fan, I think that that Browns Chiefs game was the one, to, you know, for me as an AFC, you know, fan, um, seeing the guys in there. I, yeah, definitely. First and foremost, you, you called it at the beginning, coach, 100%. Um, let my heart lead my head. But I think also my um, inherent uh, hatred of the uh, City Chiefs may have played a small part in my decision making. But you know what? I think everybody wants the Browns to win. They wanted them to win because, you know, they've had horrid couple of years, several years um, where they weren't winning. They were, you know, the, the joke was, you know, what was, uh, uh, what gets more laughs, um, Donald's um, speeches or, uh, you know, the old uh, uh, what, 1995 Ch um, uh, Cleveland Browns. Um, I mean, you know, needed that after LeBron left them and everything else. Cleveland needed a winning sports team. Indians weren't doing very well, and, and here we go. So we are where we are. One, you mentioned before about Higgins. All right, you know, the hard part is, is that when, when you have the ball and you know where you are, mm. you're going to do everything. You're taught, yes, you are taught to go ahead and think of ball security, but, you know, how many times have you seen, especially in this league nowadays, where people are reaching, they're reaching all the time, now, as a defensive player, you like that mm. because that means, okay, well, I've got a shot at it. And, but again, you know, if my knees are on the ground or something like that, you know, the ball's dead. I hate that. Um, but long story short is, is that, you know, Higgins competitor, he wanted to go ahead. He was trying to do everything good for his team. Sadly, um, it didn't work out the way they want. In terms of the hit, you know, you know, anybody who's played the game knows, you know, you've got to really, you know, you, you got to be conscious of where your head is at all times. And I'm talking about the helmet, helmet and is, issue right there. Mm -hmm. um, I think that many of us, when we saw that go through, you were like, wait, wait, what's that? Yeah. Um, but it needs, they, they need to be able to figure something out. And I think that league safety in mind, I think that it will, but if there is reviewable, I mean, now if we real, if it's noticed, if it's seen helmet on helmet before uh, an incident, has to be called it has yeah. to be. just i don't think there should be any anything on that because that's safety for the team safety for the players um and again you know a massive swing it, yeah. i think in, in my mind i think that you know it really hurt the browns yeah um but every every cloud has a silver line you know when the browns did have a chance at the end to go ahead and, and make something of that game um coach can we go over to can we talk about third quarter and the defensive hit uh, Pat Mahomes. Sure. Um, yeah. You know, that's the one that most people, besides the, besides the, you know, the touchback, what most people are going to think is that, you know, a major NFL star ended up going ahead and taking a hit. Mm -hmm. um, first and foremost, you know, uh, all seen the hit. Um, it, there was it, there was nothing untoward towards it. It was not perfectly clean hit. It's just unfortunate the way that, you know, when Mahomes went down, yeah. but when, the player of that strength and magnitude stand up and has no clue where they are. You automatically are worried about that person and mm. injury mm. concussion protocol automatically. And I don't think anybody thought anything of it. What I I'd like to go ahead and talk about is one where we are with concussion protocol in the NFL. And right now there's a big question mark for next week uh, yep. for the games that we're going to talk about soon. Yep. Um, but I think, one is is that every anybody who's a student of the game who plays the game would have been watching that and if they see such a player as Mahomes get up very wobbly on his feet obviously in had taken a hit 
Um, and we know that it was a strong hit. And yes, there's probably, you know, immediately into the blue tent um, for, you know, concussion protocol uh, procedures. What are we worried about? And I'm going to throw it out right there. And I think both of us would probably, I know where we kind of stand, but I think we should talk about this. What concerns me is that in the NFL right now, we have players who, um, you know, uh, let's let our young players, Phoenix family and others who are playing in, in BAFA over here and even Pee Wee and, you know, back in the States, mm. will see that and they will think, well, it's out of Pat Mahomes hands because somebody else is going to make the call. Okay. Yep. Fine. But why would you think that after taking it like that from a very, very serious player, um, you know, strong defense coming in there, going straight down, coming in there, you can even slight bend in the neck right over there. He's obviously concussed. How in the world can you go ahead and recover within that small period of time to be putting yourself in, potential risk. Now, again, you and I don't know, as it is right now, it looks as if Mahomes will not be able to play on Sunday. However, reports that are coming through, and I think you and I talked about this once earlier, is that it looks favorable. Yeah. So I'm going to put it to you right now, is do you think that if a player is taking any kind of hit like that, where do you stand as a coach, as a parent, and more importantly, as somebody who plays the game? Well, let's let's uh, let let's let's get this right out out in the open straight away. It, both of these tackles that we're talking about here, both legal tackles. I don't think there was any intent, any malice, and I don't think they they crossed the line in in, in either case. I think the the first one on Higgins may be more clumsy, but it was helmet to helmet and, and should have been called. When you look at the Mahomes one, he 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 connects with the upper arm. Um, goes over his back and, and Mahomes goes down on the crown of his helmet, which, you know, you and I have both seen um, players take innocuous um, falls to the ground where the helmet has collided with the ground and they get up and they're very wobbly. What I'm encouraged by was Mahomes was straight to the locker room for all the, the, the bluff and bluster. Once he, finally, once he managed to get off the field and into the blue tent, you could see him jogging down the sideline, almost as if to say, I'm okay, put me back in, you know, I'm good to go. Um, fair credit where credit is due. The NFL kept him from that game. And, and where I do think the NFL have got things right, it, it much like uh, and where I think soccer in, in, in this country have got it wrong, is that it's an independent opinion. He was assessed, he wasn't assessed by uh, members of the chief medical staff. Um, he wasn't assessed by his own physician. It was a, a representative from the NFL who is sent to the games for these instances. So credit to the NFL for doing that because he was told, clearly you're not going back. He wasn't even allowed out of the locker room to come back to the sideline. He's done for the day. I'm with you. I don't think, and, and, and it concerns me, and, and again, I think this is something else that we're going to see in the off-season with the NFL. They're going to look at this and hopefully come up with a better way of dealing with it. It concerns me. We're, we're, we're recording this on a Wednesday, late Wednesday afternoon uh, ahead of Saturday and Sunday games. All the, all the news reports seem to be suggesting, and whether they're coming from Mahomes' camp or the Chiefs' camp or wherever they're coming from, is that he's making good progress, as you say. I think, again, this decision needs to be taken out of their hands completely. And, and, and I believe it is. I believe it's still an NFL decision and an independent physician would need to clear him to play. But I think there's got to be a point at which during the week you just turn around and go, this is not in the best interests of, of Mahomes as an individual, but the sport as a whole. Given they've spent so much time um, looking at, at CTE and, and concussions and making the game safe. We, again, we touched on it before, making you know, defensive players more accountable for safety and, and the safety of their opponents. I think the NFL need to turn around and say, you know, we need to assess you on the Tuesday before a game, you know, or if the incident happened on the Monday night game, perhaps on the Wednesday, you know, where you may only have six or six days turnaround between games. I don't, in my heart of hearts, however big this game is this weekend and however important it is 
to him as a player, as an individual, and as to that organisation. I think the NFL will do themselves a massive amount of good by coming out early in the mm. week and saying, we don't feel this player has recovered sufficiently to be able to play safely in the following week's game, and we will reassess him for the, for the week after that. Because the worst thing that can happen from the NFL's point of view right now and we'll take this away from the, the Chiefs and, and, and Mahomes as an individual. We, we said earlier, Jackson came out of the game as well with a concussion. He would probably have been in a similar boat. It wasn't with, with Jackson, perhaps you didn't have that visual of him standing up on the field and, and nearly collapsing into his offensive line. But the, 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 the implications are just as bad. If we had a player who went down, not even got up, and, and we saw they were concussed, we would be saying to them, you're done for the day and you're not going to be training for the next week, at least. And then we'll, we'll assess it as we go. And I think the NFL will do themselves a huge amount, given the amount of attention that is on this particular incident. Again, noted that it's the, the Super Bowl MVP, it's the number one ranked team and everything that's going with him. Everyone saw him come off the field. If they allow him to play this, this Sunday, I believe the game Sunday, if they allow him to play on Sunday and he goes down with another concussion or worse, there, there really is no coming back for the NFL in those instances. And, and they, will, they will discredit this game enormously. And, and from someone like yourself, who's put so much time and effort into working to understand concussion, to explain it to the parents and, and the players that we've got who, who will come up to us and have come up to us and said, coach, I feel better, can I play again? The, the hardest thing is to turn around to that child or that parent and say, sorry, they can't play. And it's not safe for them. And I think the NFL need to do that. that, that and that's my take on it. No, I, I, I appreciate that. And that's incredible because the thing is, is that you and I, let, let's, you know, if we go back when we were playing, you know, you were graded by your toughness. You know, you could be a, a great player, but it was, you know, would you stay on that field? Yeah. You know, oh, I've got to, you know, I mean, it, and if you think way back to like when Dick Buckus was playing, you know, um, dislocated my shoulder, pop it back in. I'm going to, yeah. you know, yeah. you know, give me enough time to get a breather. That, that's not the way that it should be right now, you know, and I'm not saying the NFL is, um, it has made it soft. They haven't, you know, the hits are still there, you know, the plays are still there, but it can be done cleanly. And I think athlete safety, you know, we're talking about a young man in Patrick Mahomes, who's got a lot more years. Just look at Tom Brady, just look at Aaron Rodgers, you know, Drew Brees, yeah. you know, a safe quarterback can actually have a real career in this league and to go ahead and put yourself at risk for a game no matter how important it is I just feel is it, it just it shows the wrong thing and I would hope um, you know both of us are agreed about this but in terms of coaching all coaches um, that go through uh, BAFCA that have their level one the first thing that they have to do do is go through their co their um, concussion protocol to get that through USA um, coaching beforehand. You, and and that to me was where I realized just how important it was, you know. And we do talk to the kids, talk to the players about why you wear your gum shield. You know, it's not because you want to protect your teeth. We're doing it for your for your concussion. Uh, and and I, I don't think we need to belabor it. Too. We've made our point, and I hope that it's gone through. I know we want to talk about the next game, but let's let's get to it. Bill was wrong. I went with <laughs> I went with my parrot family uh, issue um, in the fact that as a as a Denver Bronco fan, I said, you know what, no way they're going to win. But you know what, the Browns made a game of it towards the end because yeah. I think all of us were rooting for them, hoping they would win. But um, just just like Thanos, uh, it is inevitable. Um, and uh, yeah, Chiefs still ended up going ahead and bringing it through. But who knows? Maybe well, I might be able to see clear of this year. Either way, um, should we oh, go ahead and should go to New Orleans now? I think we talk we, about we, that we, game. we wrap this up. We <laughs> we had said we were going to do a brief review. We, we, well, I think I think the good thing about it is that there were a lot of talking points from from that weekend, and I, I don't think we we do the game in any disservice by by talking about them at length. And and it and it does give, you know, again, it, it, it's good insight into into what we saw, how we, how we felt, and and address some of these issues the, the weekend was wrapped up with, with what we, we I think even 
we just said that how good that Chiefs and Browns game actually turned out to be. I still think this game, the, the Bucks and the Saints, I think this game lived up to its billing um, yeah. in a lot of ways. I, I think it was an absolute fantastic game. And then we'll try and keep this a little bit shorter than some of the others. But but you, this was the one. I'm 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 sitting there, no wins. You're two and zero. I'm thinking this is not a good week for me. But we both called this one, and I think we both called this one pretty much um, down the line. And, and and what we sort of figured would happen came through. What do you think? Yeah, you know, um, no. The weapons were all there for um, for Brady. He, you know, he he knew what he needed to do. He got it. He got it done. They got it done. The defense, in terms, of, you know, a completely different defense, uh, Tampa Bay than what they had uh, previously. I mean, Kamara still ran the ball on them. Mm-hmm. Don't don't get me wrong. And Breeze still was able to go ahead. And, you know, he didn't light it up, but he definitely played a really good last game. And that for me was the biggest thing. You're talking about two of the uh, greatest quarterbacks. Drew Brees, Walter Payton, man of the year. Um, you know, the guy, the guy is amazing and has tons of kids. I mean, he's, 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 <laughs> he's got lots of choices, which is good that he's juggling that, you know, but he's a, he's a character and he's a competitor and all the way up until hopefully this was his last game. I think, I think, it, I think that um, especially in this league and I think for the saints, it would be great, but saints put on a great show, mm-hmm. um, really good show. And, you know, Drew Brees, you know, the guy is, he's the kind of quarterback that you wish you would have. You always wish you would have someone, a, a proper leader, a proper man, proper person who wants to go ahead and do things for his play, you know, for his team. And he'll do it. And he's, he's put it on the line several times before. So um, great game. We don't need to go into too much detail because at the end of the day, it's one, um, which was great, you know, happy with that. And uh, there we go. So now we've got, um, we had four four games now we move to two games we, we do uh, and, and now we're in the divisional champ you know the uh, the AFC and the NFC championship we do and, and just to wrap that up I, th- I think you're right I think um, Breeze would, has, has had an outstanding career uh, and I think you know I think every player you know would want to go out lifting the Super Bowl the Lombardi Trophy uh, and then walking into the sunset sadly you know for so many players including some of the absolute greats of the game they never get that opportunity but I think for Breeze now uh, Hill we, we you identified last week Taysom Hill as, as possibly being uh, someone that would have an influence on that game sadly he was injured and wasn't able to I, I just think with Taysom Hill waiting to step forward now, I think the Saints are about to to, to go in a, a slightly newer direction. With with Hill and Kamara, I think they've got uh, they've got something that they can carry forward. And I and I I'm with you. I I, I think Breeze suits up next year. I, I think he suits up, but I think he suits up as as a, a, a an off field the the backup role, just the, that that voice in in Hill's ear um, guiding him along. Possibly. I mean, you know, he's had, um, Taysom's had a year under him, um, Mm -hmm. you know, and and this has always been good with his backups, Um, you know, and and I don't think there was ever a question, you know, Drew knew that there's going to be a certain period in his, in his career, it's going to have to, he's going to, he's going to stop. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that there's also player health. You got to remember that there was a period of time, you know, he had a couple games where he had to miss. Uh, It's time, you know, and, um, Will he suit up? I, the thing is, is that he's, you know, in terms of the, um, he does uh, a franchise tag um, quarterback, really, they can't afford to go ahead and keep him on if they're not going to be able to use him. So, um, you know, and again, be where they are right now, they're going to want to go ahead and do something about that O-line. Um, definitely on the O-line. They spent a lot of money to get Kamar, um, yeah. Yeah. you know, and, and they want to keep him strong and healthy and they want to make him, he needs to play much more of a, of a, of a uh, part of that game. For some reason, you know, we're talking a thousand yards guaranteed. Yeah. Uh, but you know, there was what, maybe one or two games where he had 150 yards. Uh, but there was some where he ended up going ahead and coming up with like 40 or something. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah. This is the year that I didn't have him in my fantasy league, which I, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I was, I had, I had an absolute shocker this year. But um, you've given uh, a, you know, but an idea the for, one uh, thing I will say, 
if it's okay with me bringing this one up, coaches, I called it from the very beginning. I said that in that game, whilst you're going to be focused on those two fantastic quarterbacks, <laughs> you're going to see Ryan Suckup, <laughs> Ryan Suckup, and Will Lutz. And you did. You saw them very early in the game. You did. Um, you did, and, and at that point, I thought, my, my, this, I'm just not going to do this anymore because you're just going to sit there and just lord over me. But, but that that changed, and and Brady came to the party, and and again for me, Thomas um, being held to zero catches was was one of the areas that that hurt the Saints. Um, but it, it'll be interesting to see, and and you've given me an interesting uh, idea for an off-season uh, discussion that we can have, but around perhaps the likes of. Brady, Breeze, Roethlisberger, Rogers, uh, Rivers, perhaps another, and just uh, what we think might the future might hold for them. But we'll we'll go to that maybe once the Super Bowl is done and dusted. But it was a big weekend. Four four winners, uh, three of which you called. One of which I think had it been uh, had it been in different circumstances and maybe a different team, you you will have gone for a clean sweep over me. <laughs> 